Where do you get your information from? Documentaries? It's a, it's a start, but people have agendas. The internet? You can't always trust the internet. You can't trust people on the internet. Can you trust me? I try and be accurate. I try and be as unbiased as possible. Well, well, well. Huh. So how do you get your information? How do you find out about history? Documentaries, the internet are unreliable. They're a good starting point, yeah. But how do you find out more? How do you get the good stuff? You gotta read. You gotta read quite a lot. And to that end, I have trawled the charity shops of Wales and a little bit of the internet to bring you that and that. Some of these were 25p, some of these were free. Uh, one of them was about £10, but I didn't spend more than that, really, on any of them. So this video, I'm just going to go through these, explain them, tell you what they are, give you my thoughts on them, and yeah, let's go. So first up, there is Napoleon by Vincent Cronin. This is one of the 25p ones. Uh, it's just a standard biography of Napoleon. I went immediately to the last chapter. It's, um, it's old-fashioned writing, it's very heavy writing. But I went straight to the last chapter to see if it mentioned the penis thing. It doesn't, but it did mention something uh, quite interesting about his autopsy and his funeral, which uh, was about a couple of weeks ago and I've forgotten it, so yeah. But it seems like a nice book, seems like a good read, and I'm looking forward to Going through that one, we have The Mammoth Book of Jack the Ripper. Key New Theories, Complete Chronology, Comprehensive Ages, and Essential Documents, Full Bibliography. Edited by Maxim Jakubowski and Nathan Braund. This is basically a collection of essays, a collection of ephemera. I read one of these. I'm planning to do a video on Jack the Ripper. And one of these actually is about the theory I have about Jack the Ripper. Not going to spoil it, but this has been very useful so far. And, yeah, I'm going to go through the rest of this quite soon, just to pick it apart. Think. Leonard Cotterill, The Bull of Minos. This is an um, archaeological book about discoveries in Crete and Greece, about uh, Knossos, about the Palace of Knossos. It talks about Heinrich Schliemann and Sir Arthur Evans, two famous archaeologists. Heinrich Schliemann? Very problematic these days. So this is going to be interesting, I think. I haven't looked at this one yet properly, I only bought it two days ago. but. Going to be very interesting. TCW Blanning, Joseph II and Enlightened Despotism. I have no idea what this one's about. I'm assuming it's about Joseph II. I'm looking to do more international history, so that's why I was, like, uh, attracted to this one. It's, it's about the Enlightenment. It's... 17th, 18th century history. Uh, Joseph II sounds like I actually don't even know who he is, so um, this is going to be an experience. This is going to help me learn something. Lords of the Scaffold by Geoffrey Abbott. A history of execution. This one supports the death penalty. It was written in uh, 1980s, I think. Uh, 1991, this was published, and it's um, 
It's about different forms of execution, but it kind of is pro-death penalty. I was reading about the guillotine, and it's really pro-guillotine, which is extremely worrying. Simon Callow, Charles Lawton, a difficult actor. Uh, film, film book for um, me trying to become a film historian. What I noticed was that this is the last published biography that I could find of Charles Lawton, who was an actor, a very famous actor in the 30s, 40s, 50s. I was in films like The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's a very good adaptation, that one. Uh, Spartacus, he was in that. That was his last film. Mutiny on the Bounty. But this is the last published biography I could find of Lawton. And this was 1987. And... As I've been looking into it, as I've been looking into his films, this seems very brief. This seems very... seems like it's missing a lot. And I think there is definitely room for someone to write a more comprehensive biography of Lawton a more up-to-date, more modern biography of Lawton, a more academic biography of Lawton. So I bought this as a starting point for a project which I hope to do, a biography of Lawton, which I hope to do. I'm going through his films right now. It's, it's a really interesting time. It's some really interesting films in there. And he is fascinating actor. To go along with that I bought uh, Gerald A Portrait by Daphne du Maurier. Gerald du Maurier, actor, theatre manager, uh, worked with Lawton a couple of times, was one of Lawton's main inspirations. It's very easy to get into this one. It's, it's Daphne du Maurier so you know it's going to be good. Uh, Gerald was du Maurier's father, so she knew quite a bit about him, so yeah, hopefully this is reliable, but there's going to be bits in there that, you know, might be a little bit biased. This was the most expensive book I bought, Forbidden Lives, LGBT Stories from Wales by Norina Shopland. This was the one that cost me about £10. It's basically little um, biographies of uh, queer people, trans people, LGBT people who have lived in Wales over the centuries. It says, a fascinating collection of portraits and discussions that aims to populate some of the many gaps in the LGBT history of Wales, starting in the 12th century with Gerald of Wales reports of bearded women and hermaphrodites and ending with the establishment of the first Cardiff Mardi Gras. I read a uh, first chapter on this about a lady called Margaret Ferk Evans. And it's very easy to get into again, it's very readable. It's, it's one I think, I don't think you'd want to read this cover to cover, but I think you'd like want to just dip in and out of it, read what interests you at the time. Read what, read what you fancy from it, and I've quite enjoyed the chapter I've read of this so far. From the most expensive book I bought to the cheapest, these were free, Madrasfield, The Real Brideshead by Jane Mulvarg, which is about uh, the Ligon family who inspired the March Mains in Evelyn Wars. Brad's Head Revisited, and The World's Greatest Hollywood Scandals by John Marriott and Robert This Crump. one is more uh, an encyclopedia type. It's little, little factoids, really. 
but they're very interesting, they're very well written, they're, again, it's a book you want to just dip in and out of, read what, read what interests you. There's stuff about Errol Flynn in there, there's stuff about uh, Edward G. Robinson, um, the whatchamacallit in the 50s, the Red Scare, and all that kind of thing. It talks about people like William Randolph Hearst. It's very interesting and I'm glad I found this. I found both of these in uh, the book bin at Morrison's. Uh, and I exchanged a couple of, couple of books for those. Speaking of Hollywood, I saw this on the internet and I thought, I want it, I want it, I want it. Joseph P. Kennedy's Hollywood Years, about JFK's father and how he was involved in Hollywood in the 1920s and uh, I think it was up to the early 30s. 1926 to 1930 during which time he ran three movie studios, spearheaded the talkie revolution, created the prototype for the modern entertainment empire, and ruined the careers of two of Hollywood's most sensational stars. Read the first chapter, again, flipping fascinating guy. Very fascinating. The first chapter is basically uh, context, talking about his background, his family, uh, where he came from, how he became a banker. Loved it so far. Looking forward to reading the rest. Woo, that's the first pile done. Woo, where's my coffee? Mm. Ow, ow, ow. Mary Hollingsworth, The Borgers. History's most notorious dynasty. This one, um, I've not read it yet. I found this one in um, charity shop. A uh, little free bookmark came with it as well. Uh, looks less an academic work and more um, a populist one, I think. But Borgers, fascinating family, really. One of the most interesting families in history, in Italian history, in European history, maybe in world history. I'm looking forward to finding a bit more about them. Most of what I know comes from Assassin's Creed, so... Yeah. Should be good. Frank McLean, The Jacobites. Done a couple of videos about the Jacobites so far on this channel. I looked this up to see if it mentioned the bridge over the River Mersey, uh, how it got blown up. Uh, it kind of skips over it, really. It's it's a good read, but this this copy, it's um, it's a cheap nasty version. It's a reprint of a book from the 1980s but it's it's done very badly. It's just it's like it's been copied onto Microsoft Word and just thrown up through Amazon's Kindle publishing thing. I mean, I'm really into the subject. I really love the Jacobites but I'm a little apprehensive to read this because, mm, yeah, it's not a good copy, I'm afraid. Richard Holmes, Redcoat. Those of a certain age might remember uh, Richard Holmes used to do a load of military history documentaries. They were always really interesting. I'm sure you can find them, like, Old documentaries turn up online all the time, all those like old military documentaries. Uh, and this is by him, this is Redcoat. I nearly bought this one online. And I thought, okay, I've given myself £20 to spend online. And uh, 
I looked at this one and I thought, do I want it, do I want it, do I want it? Really want it, but that one's a bit more expensive. I can go for that one, that one's a bit cheaper. And in the end, I put it down. I took it out of my basket. And then I happened to find it in a charity shop. Actually, it was the junk shop. It was the junk shop I found it in. So it was kind of um, a lucky find, and it was cheaper than online as well. So, yeah. I read the introduction to this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that. It's got a little postcard in it as well. <laughs> of some, um, some soldiers. 65th Regiment, 1822. York and Lancaster Regimental Museum at Hroverham. Uh, officers, Grenadier Line and Light Companies, Private Grenadier Company. Oh, that's lovely. Oh. Ah. Now, this is one I've already read. Uh, three pounds from the works. Charles Bronson, Broadmoor, My Journey into Hell. This gave me the idea for a video about memoirs and how reliable they are, how, how informative, how much can we trust them, because, come on, this is Charles Bronson, the prisoner, not the actor. I'm not going to spoil it, but not that long ago, I dipped into Bill Clinton's autobiography, and let's just say... Charles Bronson, more reliable than Bill Clinton. So with that in mind, I've got four more uh, memoirs here. Got The Colditz Story by Pat Reed about um, internment in Colditz during the war. Uh, that was made into the film starring John Mills. I've got two books on the craze, which were 25p each. One by former Cray boss Tony Lambrianu, and the other by their brother, uh, Charlie. Not looked at these properly yet, but... Hmm. Interesting to see how reliable they are. And one that is reportedly bullshit, which I've spoken about on the Past Force website, and which I've wanted for, oh, a while. Kim Philby, My Silent War. I'm 80 pages into this, and wow, wow, it's really good. I mean, holy hell, this is good. No spoilers for how reliable it is, but... Shall we use the Clinton scale of reliability, where how reliable is it compared to Bill Clinton? It depends. That's all I'm going to say. It depends on who this is written for. And I haven't quite worked out yet who it's written for. Ah, final two books then. One uh, by Thomas Hoving, Tutankhamun, The Untold Story, about the guy found in Egypt, the former pharaoh. Uh, this is a penguin book. It's about the life of Tutankhamun. Uh, called itself a real-life detective story as riveting as any thriller. And lastly, one by Sarah M. Evans, U.S. History. Uh, Born for Liberty, a history of women in America. Uh, this is going from the 16th century right through to modern times. Uh, hopefully it contains, like, some stuff about film. I haven't checked yet, but I really want to look into the film part of this, see if it, like, does talk about women in film, like Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn, major feminist icon 
wore trousers at a time when women weren't supposed to wear trousers. Didn't give an absolute flip. Ugh, I forgot about this one. Arthur M. Schlesinger Jr., the Imperial Presidency. Pulitzer Prize winning historian traces the escalation of presidential power and considers what Congress and the people can do about it. Uh, quite an old one, I think, this. Um, Nineteen seventy three. Is that before or after Watergate? Be very interesting to look at this and compare to what has happened since, I think. Gotta say it's not a very um interesting cover this one, but um I mean look at the guy. I mean now that's a look. Not the look I'd go for, but... So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this um, trawl through the latest additions to my um, history library. I might go through the rest of it at some point, talk about the other history books I've got. Uh, the older ones. If that's something you'd be interested in, give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help me expand the history library, expand what I can talk about on this channel, help me grow this channel, help me get better equipment, help me go on research trips, I'm planning one. Well, it's either going to be Rome or Paris. There's definitely a video I want to film in Paris, so don't forget to check out the Kofi page and give us a little tip. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. What am I talking about? I don't know yet. I've got research done on an Anglo-Saxon. Well, actually, we're not supposed to use the term Anglo-Saxon, because apparently it's... Um, apparently because of the racist connotations, and it's not... That's a video in itself. That's a video in itself.